Yes, hello everyone. Uh, we are continuing our discussion on the memory management. And uh, we earlier we talked about uh, static memory management and dynamic memory management using the runtime stack. And now we'll continue with the uh, discussion on the heap and then finally uh, on the implementation of uh, scope rules. So, <clears throat> when we are talking about the heap, we it, it is uh, the that discussion is in the context of explicit memory allocation. And what do we mean by explicit allocation? Well, that's in the case where the programmer explicitly uh, allocates memory. So an example would be from C or C++, where we have where the programmer defines two pointers like uh, int star p, int star q. So both of these pointers are, are, are pointers to integers. And then the programmer explicitly allocates memory for these pointers by saying p is equal to new int. So in that case, uh, a, a memory has been allocated to which uh, p points to and that memory is large enough to hold an integer. So p points to a memory location uh, holding an integer. Uh, the same here, q is equal to new int. Then we could do some dereferencing, star p is equal to zero, meaning the uh, space that uh, p points to now holds the value zero. And then finally we would do a free, or this actually should be a delete if we're in C++ or free in, in the C language. And in that case, we're deallocating the memory pointed to by P. So some languages like C and C++ allow the programmer to do explicit memory allocation and explicit uh, deallocation as well. And uh, this allocation of memory cannot happen on the runtime stack. Uh, uh, and uh, one reason why that's the case is, for example, if a function explicitly allocates memory and returns a pointer to that memory, uh, that memory has to be accessible after the function ends. So if the memory was allocated on the runtime stack, it would not be available after the function ends because the activation record for that particular function would be deallocated after the function ends. So let's look at an, at an example here. Um, let me increase uh, the font here. So here we have a function f which returns a pointer to an integer. So what the function does in, the, in its body is uh, to allocate a new integer and returning a pointer to that space, that's this PTR here, and it returns that pointer. So it's returning an a pointer to an integer uh, space. Uh, the main function calls this function f and uh, gets back a pointer to the space allocated by f. So in this case, uh, the integer that it has been allocated inside the function f needs to be or may need to be accessible after the function call. So presumably ptr, that pointer, would be used after the function call. So the space that had been allocated here with this explicit allocation uh, cannot be allocated on the runtime stack cannot be allocated inside the activation record for f because it has to be alive. It has to be accessible after f finishes. And remember our discussion in general when a, a function finishes execution, its activation record will be popped off the stack. So this is the reason why we have to allocate memory in some other place allocate memory that is explicitly allocated and uh, we use the heap for doing so. So the heap is used to manage uh, 
explicit memory allocations, which can happen at any time, uh, and it's uh, uh, explicitly allocated in a particular area of memory called a heap. Uh, and uh, this is an area of memory uh, which can be allocated and deallocated relatively freely. Uh, the programmer uh, allocates it and it's a uh, uh, and really needs to do deallocation as well. Uh, well, at least that's the case for language like C and C++, because if the programmer doesn't do uh, deallocation, we have a memory leak. And in general, heap management methods fall into two main categories, according to whether the memory blocks are considered to be of fixed or variable length. And this is actually something uh, that is uh, a kind of an implementation detail, meaning how the heap is really implemented. And uh, there are these two methods uh, in, uh, allocating a fixed uh, size from the from the heap or a variable size uh, from the heap and uh, we are not uh, uh, we're not going to consider these two different methods if you're interested you can have a look at the the section 541 and 542 to to um, to read about this so let's uh, rather go directly into uh, the implementation of uh, scope rules uh, remember that we had earlier talked about the two different types of uh, scope rules, uh, static scope and dynamic scope. And uh, the implementation uh, of the environments and the scope rules requires uh, uh, a particular or suitable data structures. Uh, so when we are re re referencing a non-local name in a program, the the activation records that are still active meaning they're still on the stack they must be examined in order to find the one that corresponds to the block where the name in question was declared remember this was only really a, we only re, we have a problem when we are trying to refer to a non-local variable if we ever try if we are referring to a local variable then the memory space for that variable is inside the current activation record. But if we're referring to a non-local variable, it can be in some uh, activation record that is still active. And the problem is, in which one? We have to, we have, to have a way to find it at runtime. And where will it be? Well, it will be in the block that contains the association for our name. If it will be in the block that really uh, uh, is associated with the declaration of the name. And uh, this order in which we examine the activation records varies according to the kind of scope we, we have under consideration. Meaning, are we in a statically scoped language or are we in a dynamically scoped language? Uh, so, we have a specific pointer called the static uh, pointer, and uh, if we follow the static uh, pointer, we have uh, the, the, the static chain. So, the order in which activation records are consulted when resolving non-local references is not the one defined by the position on the stack. Uh, Remember that we have activation records that are directly connected by the dynamic chain pointer. Remember the dynamic chain pointer points to the previous activation record on the stack. And uh, if we follow the dynamic chain pointer to the previous record on the stack, it may not be the uh, one that holds our non-local reference. So it, it's, it's not guaranteed that the previous record on the stack holds the non-local reference. Because remember, the, the, here we're talking about static scope, that um, uh, the st static scope 
is associated with the textual structure of the program. When we look at the program, we can figure out the static scope rules or the environment that is in place at a given point in the program. So the first activation record with, within which to look is really defined by the textual structure of the program. And we use this static chain pointer uh, to locate uh, this record. So remember that we have both a dynamic chain pointer and a static chain pointer inside the activation record. Um, given that we can have uh, nested blocks in the language, in the programming language under, under question. So let's look at this example here. We have, uh, we have block A. Inside block A we have block B. And inside block B we have a declaration of a function called phi. And also inside block B we have a block C. And it's actually the case that block C is the one that calls function phi. So if we look at the uh, stack, the runtime stack, uh, after executing this call phi2 here inside block C, how does the stack look like? So we're assuming that we're calling function phi and the function phi has not yet uh, finished. It's, it's running. So in that case, we have the, this uh, uh, scenario. Um, uh, at the top of the stack, we have the function phi. Notice that it says pipo here. It actually should be phi. Um, so pipo here is the, is the, is the, um, should be phi. Uh, the activation record for phi is at the top of the stack because phi is the one that was called uh, last. Um, then at the top of uh, phi we have, or, the, or actually the one below phi is the activation record for C, then for B and then for A. Because we entered the block A, then we entered the block B, uh, then we entered block C and C is the one that called phi. So we have phi, C, B, A. Um, the, this figure also shows the static chain pointer and the dynamic chain pointer. And if we look f first at the dynamic chain pointers, we have a pointer from uh, the activation f uh, record for phi that points to the activation record for C. We have a dynamic chain pointer that points from uh, the activation record for C to the activation record for B. And we have a dynamic chain point to the points for, from the activation record for B to the activation record for A. Remember, the dynamic chain pointer just reflects the order of the function calls. So from phi to C, from C to B, and B to A. On the other hand, the static chain pointer does not reflect the order of the calls, but it points to the static parent, can we say. The static parent, meaning uh, the activation record that holds uh, the non-local references. It holds the declarations of variables that are referred to non-locally. So let's see if this is the case. If we start in uh, the figure for phi, its static chain pointer points to the activation record for B. Let's have a look. Phi is declared inside block B. So the enclosing block for phi, or what I call static parent, is indeed B. So for example, when phi is referring to the non-local variable x, that x is the one declared in B, inside block B. And that's the reason why we have a static chain pointer from the activation record for phi to the activation record for B. Then we also have uh, a static chain pointer from 
the activation record for C to B. So C is here and its enclosing block is indeed B. So that's true. There should be a pointer from C to B. And finally we have a static chain pointer that goes from the activation record for B to the activation record for A. So what is the enclosing block for B? It's A. So if B was directly referring to the Y variable, it would be the Y variable that is declared at the top of block B here. So that's why we would need the pointer from the activation record for B to the activation record for A. So the non-local variable x, which is used in procedure phi, is not the one declared in block C. It's the one that is declared in block uh, B. So if we look at this again, this non-local variable here, x, is not the one that is declared in C. because we're using static scope, it's the one that is declared in B. So it is indeed the case that a reference to a non-local variable inside phi uh, is not a reference to a variable that is declared in an activation record uh, next to it. That would be wrong. It is the one declared or kept in the activation record uh, further away. So the static chain pointer is the one used to point to that. So here we, ha we indeed have an example where um, uh, where, the, the, where we, we are resolving the non-local reference um, not by, by the position on the stack. It's not directly, it's not in the first activation record. We do not look in the first activation record uh, above, but we follow the static chain pointer to go to the correct place. Uh, so to be able to locate this correct activation record, which contains the memory for a non-local variable, uh, we uh, need, to, need to go through the static chain pointer. Um, and notice that the static chain pointer for function phi points to the activation record for block B, and then B has a static chain pointer that points to block A. Again, phi points through its static chain pointer to B, and B th through its static chain pointer to A. Um, and so when we're inside the call to procedure phi, the memory associated with variables x and y is found by following the static chains pointer. So when we're inside phi, it's a question of where are these two variables kept, x and y? Where is the memory for these two variables? Well, one of them is in the activation record for b, that's the variable x, and the other one is kept in the activation record for uh, for A. Uh, 